you don't want for Christians? For Christians, that this world is not our home. As much as we love this world, as much as you might love this life, understand this, guys. This is not our home. I have a insert today. I want you guys to take your insert out of all these Bible passages. I want you to keep this because these are a lot of passages I just meditated on and, and would dwell on uh, for long periods of time as, as I was going through different things. But check this out. Check out these wonderful promises. If you're a Christian, don't be so attached to this life and to this world. I'm not being morbid in any sense. And we will talk about loving this life and living to the fullest. Absolutely. But understand, this world is not our home. Check out Hebrews, the first one, 13, 14. The writer says this, For here, in this world, we have no lasting city, but we seek a city that's to come. That's the ESV version. I wanted to put the New Living Translation because it really captures the essence as well, even though it's a paraphrase. He says, for this world is not our permanent home. It's our home, but it's not our permanent home. Okay, We have to understand that. We are looking forward to a home yet to come, something far better than this. Doesn't that right away give you comfort and hope as a Christian? This, For all the pain, toil, trouble of this life, something far better that awaits us. This isn't our home if you're a Christian, man. Hmm? Then in 2 Corinthians um, 4, 16 and 17, Paul's talking to Christians about enduring hardships for being a Christian in this life. If you're living out your faith, and it's difficult in different kinds of ways. Not only do we have the regular pains of daily life and all that, but if you're strong in your witness and you're living for Christ, you're going to get in trouble oftentimes. It's not easy to live in a, as a Christian in, in this world. And Paul's encouraging the folks there to just endure the hardships and the trials and suffering as a Christian. And here's the hope that he gives them. Check out verses, or chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Don't lose heart. Though our outer selves are wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day for this light momentary affliction. That means whatever we face in this world, he calls that light momentary affliction. Uh, sometimes it doesn't seem like that it's hard and difficult but he's saying it's all that that is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison and that is such a deep and rich saying this eternal weight of glory this heaven heaviness of glory that awaits us when we come into the kingdom of the lord right first peter 2, 11, Peter says this, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. He's saying, look, as Christians living in this world, don't get caught up in the world. The words he uses are just amazing here. When he calls us sojourners, do you know what a sojourner is? We don't hear that very often. <laughs> that means, literally means a temporary stay that you know, when somebody comes to a town, a stranger comes to a town, says, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm just passing through. That's what that means. This life here for the Christian, we are sojourners. This isn't our home. We're just passing through. We're not here to stay permanently. We're not to be so in love with this world that it means everything to us. And once it's gone, once we're dead, there's no. There's something far better than a way. You see the comfort in this? No matter what you face and the trials you face, if you believe in the Lord and you believe the promises of his word, you're a sojourner. man. You're just passing through. You're not here to stay. And then he calls us exiles. An exile is a person who's not living in their homeland, who is, who's separated from their true country. You know, you get somebody from another country is taken by force or having to leave in some way your own land to go somewhere else. That's an exile. Okay. To be separated from your true country, from your true home, with the hope of returning one day. You know, if you're a Christian, you're in exile right now. We're in exile. <laughs> Our true home is with the Lord, and one day we're going to be with him. That's why Peter says, as sojourners, people that are just passing through, live to the glory of Christ. As exiles, where this isn't your home country, there's something far better that awaits you, right? That's our mindset. That's our hope. That's why we don't have to be so afraid of facing difficulties, trials, and even death especially. Something far better than this awaits those who believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe this? These are the promises. This is what I, I just clung to, you know, and you hold on to these. In Revelation, in your uh, handout, chapter 21, verses 1 through 4, check this out. This is the recreation, the new heavens and the new earth. 
on that precious day. Then I saw a new heaven, a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. The sea was no more, and I saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. And check this out. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. He's made all things new. See, that's for us. That's a promise for us. That's the hope that we have as Christians. Amen? How can you be really totally bummed out if you know that this is the truth, no matter what you face? Understand? That's why. When you're facing these things, and I could say this, you're clinging to his word. And this is just, uh, you're just getting a tiny portion. And as we go through this series, we'll be unpacking these passages and and others like this as we deal with different topics in different areas. While I wanted to live, certainly, I was not afraid to die because of Christ. Again, not because I'm brave, not because I'm stoic, because I have great faith because of Christ. My prayers were not desperate prayers for healing at all costs, that the Lord is pleased to heal me. Amen. Praise God. I love my wife, my kids, my church, my family. Good. But if he's pleased to take me, amen. Let your will be done. And so we pray. 